Good day, fellow investors. Today I want to discuss an out-of-the-box investor that really isn't afraid of speaking his mind and is very, very contrarian. He's famous for being the partner of George Soros and founding the Quantum Fund and achieving a return of 4,200% in the first 10 years. That's 45% per year. So if that person says something, I'm sure there to listen. And we'll discuss his 15 quotes or investment strategies for success. So Jim Rogers wasn't so concerned about accumulating wealth as was Soros or Buffett. He likes to enjoy his life. He traveled with a Mercedes through 116 countries with his wife to set the Guinness world record and things like that. He's very interesting because in 2007 he moved to Singapore because he really focuses on Asia as the continent for the 21st century. And his two daughters speak fluently Mandarin. He's now focused on investments like Myanmar, Vietnam, and he has been famous for investing in things that nobody wants to look at, like the Danish Krone in 2010. Where is Denmark? So, really, he looks at out of the box. And let's see what are Jim Rogers' 15 rules for investing success. The first rule, invest in something when people say they never want to invest in it again. So, when they are throwing it out of the window. Jim Rogers is a bull on gold. However, he is not enormously invested in it because he sees that gold will fall to 600 maybe before it goes to 5000 and he sees the low in gold in 2019 and he will be ready to jump in when gold falls to those lows so when gold falls to 600 when nobody wants to touch it then it's the time to go in. The second rule is investing is both qualitative and quantitative. We will all love to just get the formula, put the factors in, and that the formula tells us where to invest. However, unfortunately, that's the easy part. The qualitative part, assessing what's going on, what will people do, what will central banks do, how will the economy evolve, where are positive factors, culture, technology, law, all those kind of things, really impact investing and we as investors have to do both analyze the numbers and then read the numbers through the qualitative factors that affect those numbers simple not so simple but certainly very fun this is one of i like very much the more people ridicule and question you you are probably onto a good thing no matter what it is nobody likes to be ridiculed but if you follow the herd you will get what the herd gets and those are average returns, lost decades, just think from 2000 to 2013, probably something that will replicate to those who invest now in the S&P 500, thinking that it is the best investment for the long term. So don't follow the herd, think for yourself, and be happy when everybody is ridiculing you, because then what you are buying is extremely cheap. However, number four, don't invest in an area just because it's depressed. Find and wait for the change that will come and make others want to invest in that area. If you invest in something just because it's depressed, you can wait for two decades for it to grow and even then it might not happen. If you listen to the CEO of the London family, he has been invested in uranium for the past 20 years and he said we haven't made any money in 20 years. So you really have to watch, okay, I know uranium is cheap. We all know uranium is cheap now and not sustainable. But when and what will happen that will shoot it up? And you want to invest when you can, just a year or just before it happens. If you can time it perfectly. But if you invest now and it happens after 10 years, you lose a lot on other opportunities. Number five, be ready to hold the cheap investments for a longer time as timing changes is very difficult. Jim always says that he's usually too early, one to three years too early into what will happen. So unfortunately, an investor also needs patience, but if you're convinced about your analysis, convinced about what will happen, then it shouldn't be a problem to wait one to three years. Especially if when the catalyst comes, you look at 100, 500, 1000% gains from your investment. And if you invest in things that are really a bargain, then you can expect those returns. This leads to number six. When you buy something cheap, 
even if you are wrong, you are probably not going to lose a lot of money. I was surprised when I read this because I didn't see Jim Rogers as a value investor. I always saw him as a trader, especially as he worked with George Soros. But I see that his trades and his short-term, long-term or macro trades are really fo focused on fundamentals, which make him a value investor and which make him look at margin of safety first so that he doesn't lose a lot of money if he is not right. Thus, he's really looking for low risk or no risk with huge upsides. Number seven, global capital flows are shifting. Adjust accordingly. As said, Jim is a total Asian bull. And if you go back to history, in the 1700s, 1600s, the biggest part of the world's GDP was created in Asia. People forget that. And perhaps in the next centuries, it will come back to that. So US, Europe will have a shrinking part of the global GDP, while Asia will be the largest part of the global GDP. Prepare your portfolio to the coming new Asian age. Number eight is a very, very interesting one. Pick any year in history and what everyone believed that year is no longer relevant 15 years later. This is really mind-blowing. So let's go 15 years back to 2002. The Fed's balance sheet was one-fifth of the current. China and Asia were still small players just entering into the world trades agreement and so on and so on. Growing but still very very small with a lot of concerns about. The world was just recovering from the dot-com bubble and everybody was scared about those internet things. What will happen? Will it really change? Is it possible to make money? If we go back another 15 years, we are in 1987, when in October the stock market crashed 20% in one day. Ooh, if you look at that stock chart now, the 20% crash was minimal. The Fed's interest rate in 1987 was at 7.7%. 7.7%. Imagine how the world would look like now if it was at 7.7%. So all that we are looking now will probably be completely irrelevant 15 years from now. Monetary policies, debt balances, who knows what awaits us in the next 15 years. And if you think that you have 4 times 15 years in a normal average investing life, we should really, really carefully think about Jim's investing rule to see what will happen in the next 15 years. 9. We have had economic problems every 5 to 15 years since the beginning of time, no matter what people say. There is a lot of news and people start talking, this is a new era, the Fed is controlling everything, there will be no recessions anymore. People more experienced than me, like Jim Rogers, have heard that many, many times over. And ever since the beginning of time, since the Roman Empire, we have had and we will have recessions every 5-10 years. That's inevitable and adjust your portfolio accordingly. Central banks will always fail to control whatever they try to control. Extremely interesting. When somebody wants to control something in the economy, it creates an artificial environment and they can keep it for a while. However, natural economic forces will always and have always prevailed. Therefore, sooner or later, the monetary policies, central banks will have to loosen their grip on the economy and they will lose control over it. So again, one thing to prepare ourselves. Just think of the 20% overnight surge in the Swiss franc against the euro when the Swiss National Bank unexpectedly abandoned its cap on the franc's value versus the euro in 2015. Number 11. Learn the Chinese world Weiji, if I pronounce it right, which means both disaster an opportunity. So when there is a disaster, you really have to think about opportunity. Those who invested in March 2009 or at the end of 2008, even if the stock price dropped even lower, are now sitting on huge gains. Those who were afraid of investing, unfortunately, missed out on a lot of positive returns. Number 12, a very important message to those who love leisure. Do nothing most of the time. This is a very surprising but very straightforward message. If you can't find an investment that has no risk and offers huge reward, don't invest. Very simple. And this is what I have been telling here on the channel since it started. Low risk, 
high reward. Jim Rogers thinks that way, so really, really important to listen. And if there is not such an investment, you simply don't invest, you enjoy your life, and who cares what goes on in the market. When something happens that there are such investments, then you invest. This is in line with Buffett's 20 investments per lifetime, not more. And that whenever you punch one hole, you lose one investment. So if you can do only 20 investments in your lifetime, you really take care about what and where you invest. Number 13, cash is the perfect hedge. Whatever happens, if you own cash, you own opportunity. You can buy, you can do something with it. So really think about having cash as a perfect hedge. Number 14, it's easier to figure out commodities than stocks. If you think of Apple, Nvidia, Facebook, there are thousands of factors that affect those stock prices, returns, earnings. If you think about commodities, there are two things that affect commodities prices, supply and demand. And especially if it's something like rice or copper, you know how will the demand work and how will the supply work because those are takes a lot of time to mine copper or to change something and you know what will happen on the demand side as the economy develops and so on so it's much easier to work with commodities than complicated stocks very interesting to be more efficient when investing number 15 don't listen to investment gurus don't listen to Jim Rogers don't listen to me listen to yourself it's your financial life you know your financial goals, goals best, you know the risks you can take, you know what works for you. And even better if you do it in your circle of competence. My strategy is different than yours, different than Buffett's, we all are different and therefore we should adjust our portfolios accordingly. Be sure to know what you know and do that. If you don't know something, simply avoid it. I will conclude with Jim's forecast that he sees the worst crash in history coming. He is honest about it, he doesn't know when it will happen, but he definitely sees it coming. So, the only thing we can do is be prepared, we'll continue to analyze portfolio strategies, investments that prepare us for that. Let's try also to make some money in the meantime with positive investments. Nevertheless, click like if you like the content. Leave your comments below, this, let's discuss Jim's view, what's wrong, what's not good, what can be taken, what's very important. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.